Mark, Hannah, you love video games. Try reading a book. Or maybe we can play a game together. Mark, Hannah. Oh, yes, Uncle David. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Me too. What did you say? I said enough video games. Oh, Uncle David, there's nothing else to do anyways. I know what we're doing. Kids, get dressed and get in the car in two minutes. Wait, but I was about to win. <laughs> Let's be honest. No, you weren't. Now, come on, quick. Uncle David, it's almost bedtime. Where on earth could we be going? Not that I'm complaining about missing bedtime. <laughs> uh, well, guys, have you ever heard the verse, O oh Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise? Sounds familiar. I've definitely heard it at church. Hannah, we say it at home every day. This verse is from Psalm 50, right, Uncle David? We say it when we pray together at home from the Agpia, right? I'm very impressed. Very good. Why are you so surprised? <laughs> well, Mark, I'm just not used to you being right. I'm just kidding. Anyways, what were we saying? Oh, yes. The Bible speaks very often about praising God. Guess how many times the word praise is said in the Bible? I know, 33. Not even close. That's the mark I know and love. It's actually more than 200 times. Wow, that is a lot. But Uncle David, how does all this have anything to do with where we're going? Great question, Hannah. We're going to church to pray tasbihah, or in English, midnight praises. The word tasbih actually means praise in Arabic. So we're just going to praise. It's not a liturgy? Yes, and it's a beautiful thing. When we praise God, it is as if we are in heaven, joining the angels and saints in their beautiful songs of praise to God. By praising Him, we learn more about God and grow closer to Him. It is so very joyful. Sounds good to me, Uncle David, but why is it happening right now on Saturday night? Tasbihah is generally prayed before liturgy. So, since we have liturgy on Sundays, we pray Tasbihah on Saturday nights. In monasteries, where they have liturgy nearly every day, they pray Tasbihah every day as well. Here we are, let's go inside. Mark, Uncle David said in Tasbihah, it's as if we're praising with saints and angels. Maybe we'll be able to see some of them with the magic glasses. Please tell me you brought them. You think so? Of course I brought them. Here, let's try. Who are you? Can we talk after? For now, join me in praising God. Arise, O children of the light, let us praise the Lord of hosts. That he may grant us the salvation of our souls. So, please, who are you? Hello, Hannah and Mark. My name is Pope Carolus VI. I was the 116th Pope of our church. It is lovely to meet you and praise with you. Pope Carolus, I've heard some amazing stories about you. Oh, please, Pope Carolus, won't you tell us about your life? Wait, oh no. Uncle David is coming. 
We need to hide our glasses. Pope Carillos, where can we meet you to hear your story? Well, you can always find me at Tasbeha, but I can also tell you my story at my windmill where I spent many years of my life. I'll see you soon. Wasn't that beautiful? Although, it really is past our bedtime now. Let's go home, kids. Here we go. Excited, kids? Yeah, this mountain is super steep. It's as if we're on a roller coaster. lived here? It's even better now than it used to be. When Pope Corollas started living here, the windmill didn't even have a roof or door, and there were no other buildings around. He was completely alone. That's unbelievable. Wow. Um, Uncle David, wouldn't you like to use the restroom after that long trip we had? Oh, uh, well, uh, that's very thoughtful of you, Mark. I suppose I could. Uh, You'll be okay by yourself for a few minutes? Yes, definitely. Here, quickly. We don't have much time. Hannah, Mark, it's wonderful to see you again. Welcome to my windmill. Hi, Pope Corollos, thank you. Now will you please tell us about your life? Sure, Hannah and Mark. I was born on August the 2nd in 1902 in a city in Egypt called Damanhur. My name was Aizir. My dad was a deacon and his name was Yusuf. My mum's name was Esther. I also had two other brothers and three sisters. I remember one day when I was only four years old. Abuna Tadros al Baramosi? What a great blessing! Thank you very much for visiting us. We're so happy to have you. Hello, Yusuf and Esther. Hello, Azar. Oh, I miss you so much, Abuna Tadros. Come here, Azar. Let Abuna Tadros have some rest. Let him sleep here. He's one of our stock. He's one of us. One of your stock? That's amazing. So, Father Tadros knew that you would become a monk. What did your parents do then? My parents loved me very much. They taught me how to love God and to believe in Him. Why, Mum, do we have to go to the church in Ibyar today? It's a five and a half hour walk. Because today we celebrate the feast of someone special. Someone who you really love? Is it St. Mina's feast? (laughs) Well done! Yes, it is. Come on, let's go. A five-hour walk? Wow! How old were you at that time? I was only five years old, but not long afterwards I was ordained a subdeacon or chanter. Did you ever fast when you were little? Of course, Mark. Fasting helps us to grow closer to God. In fact, one day, when I came home from school, I saw that my mother had cooked all kinds of delicious dishes on the day before Lent. Wow, Mum! What's all this incredible food? Azar, tomorrow we start fasting for Lent. 
I want you to enjoy a special meal before we stop eating these things for a while. Wow, Mum. Thanks. But how can we eat all this great food when some of our neighbours have so little? Please, Mum, can we give our food to them? You gave the amazing food your mum made away right before Lent. What a fantastic story. What happened next? My mum passed away when I was 10 years old. But she gave me the icon of Saint Mina, my intercessor and my friend. After my mum went to heaven, I finished school successfully and got a job in a shipping company in Alexandria. But I eventually quit my job and went to the monastery of El Baramus. I became a monk when I was 25 years old. So you just left the excitement of the city to live in the desert? Wow! What was your new name when you became a monk? Saint Mina was my favourite saint, so I became Abuna Mina. Even as a monk, I went to a special school for priests and monks to learn more about Christianity and my faith. But what did you do at the monastery? In the monastery, I served the elderly monks, washed their clothes, cleaned their cells and prepared their meals. You are very meek and humble, Pokorilos. Did you go to the windmill after that? Not yet, Mark. After three years, I was ordained as a priest. Another two years later, I went deeper into the desert to live in a cave. You lived in the desert, alone. That must have been difficult. Yes, but even though I lived in solitude with the Lord, I visited the monastery once a week to have Holy Communion. One day I chose to live in Cairo with seven old monks so I could serve them. But that's another long story. After the seven, old brothers returned to the monastery. I had permission by Pope Yannas the 19th to live in the windmill that I had rented. This windmill? Unbelievable! So cool! Yes, Mark. The windmill first didn't have any roof or door. However, while there were many challenges, the Lord took care of me and I loved my life of praise and prayer with God. But this place is deserted. There is no food or water. How did you make Orban? I remember. There used to be a guard who brought water to me in the windmill, but once he didn't come on time, I needed the water for making Orban before the liturgy. So I prayed before St. Mina's icon. It was midnight, and suddenly... I'm Abdi Sayyid. Are you sleeping? Father Mina is waiting for the water to do the Orban. Go quickly and never do it again. I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I, I will never do this again. This is double the amount of water. Sorry, I, 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 I will never, ever, ever, never do this again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Saint Mina never left you. How did God protect you, Pope Carillus? Once, when I was praying, there were robbers who came to the windmill. They attacked me, hurt me, and left me wounded. But as soon as I crawled to Saint Mina's icon and touched it, the bleeding stopped immediately and I was healed. Totally amazing! Did you love your life at the windmill, even with all this hardship? Yes, Mark very much. I found real joy in the time with God, praying Tasbeha and the liturgy every day. Tasbeha? You used to pray Tasbeha at the windmill? 
I used to wake up at 2 a.m. to sing midnight praises. After that, I did the Orban and prayed the liturgy, which finished at 8 a.m. So why did you ever want to become the Pope? I never wanted to be the Pope. But one day, I had a dream. A dream? A dream. What was it about? In the dream, I saw Pope Yannas, the Pope at the time, climbing a mountain. He was exhausted and extremely tired. All of a sudden, his papacy staff was broken and he began to call out to me. Abu Namina! Ya Abu Namina! Yes, Your Holiness. Look, the papacy stick is broken. Don't worry, Your Holiness. Give it to me. I will fix it for you. Here you are. Your Holiness Pope Yannas, I fixed it for you. No, <laughs> I am giving it to you. So this dream showed you that you would become the Pope? And then you really were ordained as the Pope? Yes, Hannah and Mark, exactly. So being the Pope meant you didn't have time to pray as much? Oh no, I still spent so much of my days in Tazbeha and the liturgy. This was the most important thing in my life. It allowed me to stay close to God and make good decisions as the Pope of the Church. Without prayer, I wouldn't have been able to know God's will for me and obey it. Every good thing that happened in my life was a result of God's love and grace. All the way until I passed away, in 1971 at the age of 68. Did you enjoy my story? Yes, Pope Carolos, it was absolutely incredible. Full of many adventures too. Thank you very much, Pope Carolos. We really loved your story. We'll see you at Tespeha. Hey kids, sorry that took so long. I ran into Abuna Michael over here, who's a monk who serves in the churches by the windmill. Abuna, this is Hannah and Mark. Hello kids, having a conversation with Pope Carolus, I see. How? Abuna, what did Pope Carolus do when he was a pope? Pope Carolus returned the relics of Saint Mark back to Egypt from Rome. Furthermore, he built a monastery after the name of St. Mina at Marriott. On top of this, he built the new St. Mark's Cathedral at Amberwes, which he and President Gamal Abdel Nasser took part in opening it. Also, Pope Carolus worked miracles for all who came to him for help. It is also during his era that the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared at Zaytun. St. Mary appeared? Really? How many people saw her? Yes, Hannah. St. Mary appeared at her church in Zaytun. I have seen her. Thousands of other people have seen her, Christians and non-Christians alike. Consequent to St. Mary's appearance, hundreds of miracles happened and many were healed. It must be wonderful to see St. Mary. Pope Carillos sounds like an incredible leader and man. He was. As Pope, he also helped start Coptic Orthodox churches in new places around the world, like Asia, America, Canada, and Australia. He also sent priests to serve in Europe and Africa. He spent so much time in prayer. How did he even have time for all of this? Yes, Hannah. I think that's the most amazing part of his whole story. Usually, people think that they need just work, work, work all day to succeed. But Pope Carolus knew better. 
he knew that God could always do more and better than he could. So, instead of worrying constantly and working non-stop, Pope Carolus focused on his relationship with God and did the best he could, and God blessed all that he did. I've never thought about things that way before. I'll need to remember this lesson throughout my life. Me too. From now on, Mark, we'll do our best and God will do the rest. Exactly, Hannah. Pope Carolus was the Pope for 12 years before he passed away. Now we celebrate his life each year on March the 9th. I need to go now, but I'll leave you with one last quote from Pope Carolus. So listen carefully. There are no good days and bad days. There are only days with prayer and days without prayer. Hannah and Mark, always remember to spend time with God so that your life can be as beautiful and as fruitful as Pope Curlus's. Meeting with you. Goodbye. Goodbye.